Good morning. Welcome to the live stream. Happy Friday. And uh, today we're going to talk about how to kill it in voiceover. Who doesn't want to kill it in voiceover? I mean, that's why you're here, right? That's why I'm here. And let me just tell you, um, this guy who's been doing it for a long time, it's a lot more fun to be killing it in voiceover than to be frustrated. And you might find yourself in either one of those situations, but we're going we're to address all of that today. I'm glad you're here. Welcome. I'm Bill Luis. I've been doing this for a while, 17 years. I've been working full-time as a voice talent, reported over 10,000 projects. Um, and let's see here. What else can I tell you? Hey, by the way, yesterday I mentioned I was uh, trying that Papa Nichols coffee. I'm on, I'm on my second day. Killing it with Papa Nichols coffee. This is good. This Hawaiian blend, really good stuff. Again, that's an unsponsored, uh, unsolicited plug. <laughs> Well, I hope you've had a good week. Hope things are going well for you. Uh, we get together every day at this time, weekday at this time, to talk about voiceover. I share a tip, trick, strategy, something to help you make more money in voiceover. Uh, it's all about, from, at the end of the day for me, it's all about the money. I don't care about anything else when it comes to voiceover. I mean, I get satisfaction out of doing it. And I love the work that I do. But, um, you, know, I, I don't, you know, I don't do this as a hobby. Um, I don't do it for bragging rights, although it's, it's, it's fun to share cool stuff that you've done. It's, you know, it's, it's always fun and gratifying to be recognized for your work. But, uh, my, my purpose, my, my, um, point of, of, uh, emphasis as a coach is helping you make money as a voiceover talent. So that's what we'll be focusing on today is, is a T uh, not TGIF. It is TGIF, but it's also, it's, um, it's question and answer, man, I'm having a hard time finding my words. I need more coffee this morning. It's Q and a this morning. We do that on Friday. So if there's something on your mind, I'll take a few of those questions, but I have something I want to touch on a topic. I wanted to touch on, and that is how to kill it in voiceover because everybody wants to know, I mean, what's the, what's the roadmap? I mean, how do you do this? I mean, and obviously it's going to, re it requires, uh, we could go, it would take a couple hours to, to go through beginning to end a detailed roadmap. But what I'm going to do in these few minutes together today is to give you like four waypoints, something that you can all, where you, you'll know which way to go and where to direct yourself and where to go after you reach waypoint number one, number two, number three. So let's get you, if you get, if I get you pointed in the right direction, we can fill out all the details with more training. There are links in the description below, specifically my voiceover blueprint, which I know many of you guys are already in. Um, but number one is this, is you need good audio. So you need to set, you're going to have to set up a home recording studio. We talked about that quite a bit yesterday. So you'll need to be able to produce good quality audio, quiet, well-treated. That's number one. Number two, you're going to need to develop your performance skill set. So you're going to need a good coach, a good program to be a part of, which is why I'm Pointing you once again down below to the description, get in the program so we can begin working and getting your performance skills developed. So you're going to need a place to record. You're going to need, you're going to need performance skills. Number three, you're going to need a demo. Now, when you first get started, you can start off by making your own demo, a DIY demo that you can use on freelance websites. Now, the reality is you're not going to build a massive career, most likely, with your DIY demo. It's a way to get started, a way to start making money. You'll eventually need to get a professionally produced demo so that you get bigger opportunities for bigger clients and bigger money. Again, I'll point you to below in the description. I'm a demo producer as well. So those are the first three things. And then finally, and this is the most important thing, and that you're going to have to, you're in the market like a maniac. And let me say this, and I, and I say this with 100% confidence, a person with massive skill and no marketing will struggle. I've seen massively world-class level talent flounder and fail in voiceover because they either could not or would not market themselves. Whereas I'll any day take an, I'll make me average below average, but turn me into a marketing machine and you can be very highly successful, highly successful in voiceover. I have seen it happen over and over and over again. So voiceover at the end of the day is a business. Now, if you're going to market, you need a good product. So don't misunderstand me. We're, and, and as I, the second way point, the point that I mentioned was developing a skill set. but you don't have to be the best voice in the world 
you don't have to be naturally gifted or talented. You just need to learn to be you. But if you can pair that with a strong worth ethic, worth ethic and a marketing plan and you're willing to execute it and work really, really hard at it, you, you can build a highly lucrative and successful voiceover talent. So those are, that's again, those are the four major waypoints on your map to voiceover success. And if you need help filling those in uh, or help along the way, again, links below in the description. All right. Thanks for being on this morning. Let's see who we've got. We've got Dave in New York City, who was first on this morning, a member of my voiceover blueprint. Dave, how are you doing? As a matter of fact, uh, I was able to give, uh, you know, I do a session on a live session on Wednesdays with my students and uh, Dave read for us and was able to get some feedback and and uh, Dave, I, I really, I really enjoyed, I, I enjoyed your read. And Dave, he has one of the great thing, one of the great assets that you have is, is actually your regional dialect. Because when somebody hears you, they will have no doubt you're from New York and you have no problems in expressing your personality. And so really at the end of the day, that's what it's about. It's being able to express yourself and then get that in front of other people. So that's part of what we do in the blueprint. Uh, David Parker was second on this morning. Good morning, David. Ron in Charleston, South Carolina. We've got uh, Michelle in Philadelphia. Finally, Friday. Congrats. Melissa in San Diego. Corey has a question. Have you changed your effects rack through the years? And by effects rack, for those of you who are newer, he's talking about any kind of processing that I use, like compression, equalization, noise reduction, that kind of stuff. Or has it stayed the same, my effects rack, that is? Did you need to change it once you moved to your new house? I didn't need to change. I never need to change it because I'm, I'm in this booth. So it doesn't matter where you put me. This booth gives me a very consistent sound. However, if I didn't have this booth, yeah, I'd probably need to do some changes to the EQ to keep it a little more consistent because the slightest change to your environment will, will certainly change your sound. Not necessarily better or worse, but just different. Um, so you have to be mindful of that. So my, you know, what you hear this morning, I don't sound in my voice, uh, chain sounds the same today as it did, you know, three, four five years ago. Now, that being said, I tinker with it. I tinker with it all the time. As a matter of fact, with the universal audio setup that I have, I can, I can, I can change. It's a file that automatically sets up my sound chain. So I just, I can save it as a file and date it and pull it up anytime I want. I pulled up what I'm using this morning was a setup that I used back in May and, you know, versus this, what it yesterday, which is my most recent, which I set up in July of this year. But can you hear a difference? No, you cannot. Why? It's because I never make it when I'm tinkering around, what I'll do is all like, usually it has to do with the compressors. Like, okay, instead of using this Fairchild emulation, let me, let me try, try a Teltronics LA-2A, or let's try both together, like double stacking compressors, or let's throw in this Manly uh, compressor. So it's usually I'm playing around with compressors. At the end of the day, though, it never changes my sound. So uh, not to say that there aren't slight differences in one compressor to another, but it's it's negligible usually depending on how you use it. But yeah, I essentially have the same sound chain I've I've had. Uh, I may again I may swap out different components, different type. I mean, they're always the same thing. It's basically the same EQ, the same compression. You know, so it doesn't need to be tinkered tinkered with. Steven in Salt Lake. Good morning, Rusty in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Hello, Julie in Humblestown, Pennsylvania. Ken in Harker Heights, Texas. John in Massachusetts. Jack in Phoenix. Bruce in Brooksville, Florida. Aaron, how are you doing in Columbia, Missouri? Danielle in Fort Wayne, Indiana. John in Rhinebeck, New York. Mark in Estes Park, Colorado. Wayne in the Olympic Mountains. Amisha, what's up in South Carolina? Bill in Foggy Boise. Uh, Cody in Sin City. <laughs> Happy Friday to you. Hope things are well in Vegas. Man, I haven't been to Las Vegas for a long time. I love Las Vegas. I'd love to get back out there. Because, and I know they're changing. I mean, they're always, it seems like, you know, a casino, a hotel gets to be a couple years old. They tear it down and build a new one. So every time I go out there, it's always nicer and cooler. Last time my wife and I went out, we watched the Blue Man Group. Had a great time. Dale in Atlanta, Sandra in Worthington, Ohio. How do you find real email addresses instead of info at? Well, first of all, let me say this. 
And info at is a real email address. One of the most recent jobs I booked was for marketing to an info at email address. So, you know, when you, if I, if let's say I'm doing some, some prospecting, trying to find a new client and I just Google video production companies and here's a new video production company I've never contacted. It comes up. And if I don't see a specific person's email, I'll just, I'll just email the info at it works. Most of those places aren't that big to begin with. So those are real email addresses and they do work. Jason in Nebraska. Hey, Magic Bob in Brantford. How are you doing? Uh, let's see here. Robert in Mobile, Alabama, just received a voice job from a client doing this during the Monday motivation. OH and an IO back at you, Robert. That's fantastic. Congrats. Sandra, Dallas, Fort Worth. Do you ever get burned out? Uh, Michelle asks. And if you do, how do you deal with it? Uh, yeah, sure. I do. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, my life is, no, it feels, it feels like it's nothing but, um, voiceover and voiceover training sometimes. So basically I'm, I'm juggling two businesses, voiceover training, which requires a lot of my time and energy and voiceover, which requires my time and energy as well. Uh, luckily I, I like those. So that's good. That, that helps, but yeah, uh, I don't make it a 24 seven thing. That's one thing. I shut it off in the evenings. I don't make myself available 24 seven. I pretty much shut it off over the weekends too. So I protect my evenings and I protect my weekends. Now there are exceptions to that. So like right now we are in open enrollment season for uh, employers who have mandatory training. And my, I have clients who, I mean, sometimes I'll book as, ex, as much as an extra $50,000 a year, just from open enrollment training, just from that. So, you know, I make myself available. This is kind of like, you know, the way December is or November, December for retail. This is what what my, re this is my, this is my Christmas season. So, uh, I'm working extra hard right now. Aside from that, you know, I try to get, Vicky and I will get away every now and then. I, I've only taken maybe like a full week vacation once or twice in the past decade, but I'll take long weekends and that kind of thing. So when you're self-employed, there's no doubt it, it, you know, it's not like being employed. So, you know, the fantasy is you're your own boss and it's great. It is, it's, it's wonderful. But the other side is you're your own boss. I mean, you know, you're the person in charge and if you don't get it done, it doesn't get done. And so when I'm not working, I'm not making money. You know, um, if I'm not recording, I'm not, I'm not earning as a voiceover talent. So that's why, and I'm, I'm very apprehensive. It's not that I can't afford to take off a week or a, a month if I want to, or more, I could, but if I do, I'll lose clients and I don't want that to happen. So I typically take long weekends. And by the way, it's worked fine. You know, again, with guarding my weekends and my evenings, that helps. And then, um, taking some extended time, you know, three, four, up to five days, sometimes a long weekend and maybe through Wednesday, uh, that's, that allows me to, to keep, keep it together and to try to find outside interests. You know, if I'm not doing this, I'm, I'm out there playing my guitar or I'm playing with my grandkids or I'm walking over at the state park or I'm, you know, I'm doing something or watching TV. <laughs> Does that count? Is that even, is that a thing? Does that count? I mean, I know it's a thing, but does it count? If you were to see out this door, I've got this, uh, I basically have occupied the basement. My, here's my studio, my office and all my guitar stuff over there. And then I have a home theater over here. So I, I'll, I'll, with theater seating. So I'll, you know, I'll kick back there in front of the big screen and, uh, and chill out sometimes that helps. You don't want that to be your only, you know, escape from work, but it helps. Hey, Laura, good Friday to you in St. Paul, Minnesota. Ken, uh, I have a brand new 10-year-old road podcaster mic. It's a large diaphragm dynamic mic. Can I use it to get started? Uh, Ken, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know all the specs or details of the stuff. I don't keep up with all the latest, greatest equipment, but my guess is, yeah, I mean, I would imagine you can. So um, use start with what you got. And then as you make money and you if you want to upgrade, then, you, you know, you can always do that. Buquan, good morning. Happy weekend to you, Dr. Bob. What's up? Good morning from bright and beautiful Clearwater, Florida. Thanks for encouraging and coaching all of us. My pleasure, Bob. Thank you for being here. John has a question. Um, thanks for everything. I have a question regarding the voiceover blueprint. 
Could you explain to me what happens after the first 90 days? Well, first of all, now I don't want to get to a whole lot of details here. For those who are interested in learning more about the voiceover blueprint, you can go below and click the link in the description. But just very briefly, there are a couple of ways, you know, some people come in and, um, and go for, you know, like a long, it's built to be, it's ongoing. It's not like an event and then it's over. It's like ongoing. And so one way to get into the blueprint is just to come in with, for a 90 day all access pass. So you can come in for 90 days. It costs way less to do it for just 90 days. You still have, you know, you have access to all the stuff. Nothing you could ever get through everything in 90 days, but you experience all the, you know, the live daily stuff and all the, all the courses, you know, it's, it's all in there. And, but after 90 days, you know, it's over, but you're given the chance to re-up if you want to. So it's not like we just say, well, you're done and you can never come back in. If you want to come back in, I mean, obviously you need to, you have to pay for the admission to be there, but you have that opportunity if you want to. I can't emphasize enough how that the blueprint is not like an event. It's not like a class. If you're going to college, it's not, college is not a class. It's an experience. It's, you know, it's, it's ongoing. It's, it's, uh, it's learning built on learning. It's interaction with your, with your teachers. It's camaraderie and community within the, the, the people that you're with. And that's, it's all that and more in the blueprint. Sean in Lebanon, Pennsylvania. Love the blueprint in your direction. Thank you, Sean. Hey, Charles. Do I think a 15 inch computer screen in the recording booth makes a difference with audio quality reflections are my concern? No, Charles, you know, I've, I used a 27 inch for years up until just, you know, a month or two ago. Uh, and right now I'm just operating off my MacBook air. Literally I'm, I'm staring into the screen of a 13 and a half inch MacBook air. And it's, you know, it's actually, it works fine. It's, you know, there's no fan. It's, uh, it works perfectly fine. But in terms of reflection, the bigger the screen, the bigger would be the concern. I get it. But I used a 27 inch for years and years and years with no problem. And I'd like to get back to that at some point in the near future. But the rest of my booth is treated really well. So, you know, you'll have to, to you know, you, you use it and then you record and, and then you have to make a determination based on that. Happy Friday. Hey, Theo. From the 26th floor in downtown Chicago, staring across the Chicago River at the iconic Merchandise Mart. Yes, yes, indeed. Um, let's see here. Oh, the stream moved on me. I got to back it up. You know how YouTube is? They, they, they want things moving. If not, they just keep moving that stream. Wayne says, on Adobe Audition, can I save a mastering chain that works for my booth and voice so I don't need to EQ every time? Yes, you can. Scotty says, just slipping in late here. No problem, Scotty. Welcome welcome from Brookings, South Dakota. David in South Carolina. Tom in Seattle. Darren in the UK. What's up? It's blustery there, he says. Working away from home, house sitting in, uh, in Cornwall, but have my Isovox go with me. By the way, if you don't know what an ISOVOX is, check it out. Just I-S-O-V-O-X. It's pretty cool. It's basically, imagine uh, a small micro studio that's on a stand that you stand up and so put your head inside of it. Yeah, it's very cool. Um, I've been able to still do my VO work while away from the studio. Darren, that's cool that you have something like that portable you can carry around with you. I'd love to try one of those out one of these days. I think they look so cool. Jeffrey says, what would you consider the best place to put demo material before setting up a web website? Well, uh, if you don't have a website and you need, you know, obviously you want people to listen to it. So you need something where you can share a link. So soundcloud.com is a good option or you could do it on Dropbox even, you know, and just provide people with a, um, with a link or a YouTube channel, you know, you can put up a static image and even your name and contact information as the video and just, you know, have the audio that way you can share the link. Uh, Robert at Hewitt, Texas. Bria, good morning to you. Is it Bria, California or Bria in California? Good morning, Josh in Houston. Oh, it's Vinny. Hey, Vinny, how you doing? We got Buquan in uh, St. Paul, Minnesota. Mike in Spanish Ford, Alabama. Okay, we're, we're going to wrap it up here because I, I got to get to work. Um, this is play and then that's work. So I love playing in the, <laughs> in the morning. 
like I like to watch TV and play golf, play my guitar, but I, I do have to start work here. But let me just answer this one last question. Can you please describe a typical day in your life as a voiceover artist? Well, let me just say, first of all, that it's different now than it was when I first started. So, I mean, it's evolved over the years. So nowadays it's, um, I don't have to spend as many hours as I used to. When I first got started, my day was I come in, I market, I market, I market, I market. And then I would do like 20, 30, maybe 40 pay to play auditions during the day. And then I would market again. Then I have dinner. And then I'd sit down, we could be watching TV and I'd sit down but with her, with my computer and I'd market and I'd market and I'd market. I mean, that's just what I did all the time. By marketing, I mean email, sending out emails to prospective clients. So I was always auditioning and, you know, um, on the pay to play sites and I was just constantly marketing myself. And then occasionally I'd get a job. And so, you know, I would break the time marketing to do the job. Long story short, over the years, what, what has happened, and actually it didn't take years, it took months, and my, the voiceover work started to occupy a big chunk of my day. Because understand, I was up to like a full-time, within six months, I was up to like a full-time income uh, for me at that time. But understand also that that was my full-time gig. I was working, you know, 40 plus hours a week doing voiceover marketing. And so today, you know, I have an established client base. I outsource my direct marketing to VO Marketing Pro, VOMarketingPro.com. So I pay them to do my direct marketing so that they keep a constant stream of prospective clients coming. Like yesterday, they, they forwarded me, I don't know, two or three emails from people um, who are interested in my voiceover services. Doesn't mean I'll book all those, but, you know, it's, you always have to have interest and then you'll be able to convert a certain percentage of those into actual clients. So they do that for me. And so my day consists of, I've got a number of, of, cl of cl uh, clients that I work closely with that have like a talent roster, their own talent rosters that I audition for them on a regular basis. So usually my day consists of an audition or two, maybe three, but it's mostly uh, doing the work for the clients that already exist. And so there's lots of, there's new projects. There's always pickups. Every project has pickups. There's always edits and additions and changes. And I mean, every day, every day. As a matter of fact, my first thing this morning will be doing some pickups for a project. So uh, I'll be working on those. And then uh, later this afternoon, I've got a webinar for my, my voiceover blueprint students. But, you know, if I wanted to, I could, I mean, I wouldn't have to work past lunch. If, if I were to coordinate my clients in such a way where I said, you know what, I'm out of the studio by noon. So if you want your stuff done, get it to me by noon. I could do that because it's, you know, if I had it all at one time compacted and I just work solidly now for the next three or four hours, I, you know, I could do it that way, but that's not the way it typically works. Typically it kind of, it kind of trickles in throughout the day. So I'm around. So, it'll, you know, I'll go upstairs and I'll bug my wife and talk to her while she's trying to work um, because she handles all the support for my voiceover blueprint students. And she's a, man, she is a worker bee. She is very organized and she's very task oriented. And I need some social interaction. So I just go up and I'll just bug the heck out of her. And eventually she asks me to leave and then I'll leave and then I'll go do something else. And then I'll come back down here and check my email. And then I'll do any pickups that came in or any new projects or any auditions. So it's, uh, it's not stressful by any means, but it's just, you know, it's different now than what it was in the beginning. So at least I hope that gives you a general idea. But my day starts, you know, my day starts doing this. So the first hour of my day, I get up, decide on, I don't even know what I'm going to talk about when I get up in the morning, typically. And then I get up and I decide on that. And then I come in here, I do this. And then I send an email out to everybody on my email list, which many of you guys are. And then I post all these videos on social media. So that's about an hour of my morning. And then it's voiceover, you know, for the next several hours through and on and off throughout the day. All right, guys, speaking of which I better get to work, but thanks for being here. I appreciate it. But keep in mind, you can kill it in voiceover. You can kill it in voiceover if you're willing to do the work and and, um, go, you know, go back through this video. If you want to be reminded of what those four waypoints are, post them in your studio, just to remind you, stay on the path, stay focused, don't get distracted. And, um, and you can knock it out of the park for sure. Many of you guys are. 
And many of you are on your way to doing it. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. We'll see you Monday.